Welcome to West Coast Wednesday here on Prospectors Radio with Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy the show and thanks again for listening. All right, everybody, welcome back to another West Coast Wednesday right here on Prospector Radio. I'm your host, Tim Grimes, and joining me tonight, as always, we got Shad and Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, and no Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis State. (laughs) He is not here. What's happening, you guys? Getting some snow today. I know, yes. Lots of snow. Well, let me see. Fluffy white. Wet well, snow, moist. Down, very moist. <laughs> moist snow. It's February twelfth. To me, it sounds frosty. Frosty. Hey, hey it's February, middle of February. <laughs> I guess it's about time we get some snow. Shed right. Dark. Yeah, I mean, I think there was only one other time we got a couple, in, like yeah. three or four inches, and that was it, and it was gone the gone. next morning. Right. So, no, this one here is going to. What they say, two to four inches or something on this. Um, snow? they're calling up to five now. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. So we shall Dang. see. Of course, people out west, you know, are probably laughing because I see there's some <laughs> post of, you know, oh, it's negative 30 degrees wind chill <laughs> with like a foot of snow. Yeah. <laughs> We're complaining about four or five inches. Yeah, good point. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, this, this shovel and sand just drives me nuts. Shut up, shoddy. Shoddy. Well, that's why we have a truck, so you don't have to shovel. <laughs> right, you no, just right? drive right through it. That's right. Smart move. I don't need no stinking shovel. People, people shouldn't be walking on our sidewalk anyway. <laughs> that's, way, that's a good way to look at it, Shad. <laughs> Jesus, God. <laughs> Oh, mercy, mercy. Yeah, it's about time, though. we got to have a little bit. I think they said Monday it's going to be 48 or 49 Monday. So, it, Have you guys ever had that? What? Where somebody, like, slips on your sidewalk and says, I'm going to sue you. Have you guys ever had that? No. I haven't. No, knock on wood. You know? if, if they okay, said that well, to me, I'd open the door and just let the dogs go at it. <laughs> Might as well go for broke, right? <laughs> well, it's it's yeah. one of those things. Good point. If somebody says, I'm calling the cops on you for pushing me, well, at that point, I'll just deck you, so at least it's worth it. <laughs> good point. That's my rationale no, in life. It's, I understand where you're coming from. It's good rational thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really funny? You guys, you guys have all seen the top nitro bike, right? Uh-huh. How it burns the wheels off. Uh-huh. Okay, you let five German shepherds out of a house. I don't care who's <laughs> on the sidewalk. His his feet's gonna be making the same <laughs> motion. He well, we it. told you about them busting down the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh, they, they were like the the bumpuses good dogs right <laughs> yeah, it's oh. just the biffles again <laughs> hey if you have a little tiny dog that tries to tease our dogs and when our dogs get out they hey, go for it they sorry, remember your yeah. dog should have been taunting ours <laughs> yeah they kind of remember don't they they got that yeah. memory in, in, in arizona they call that a snack a what <laughs> a, sh- a snack, snack? Oh, a, a Scooby, a Scooby snack. snack. Jesus. Yeah, right. Jesus. My gosh, craziness. It is. It's... We got owls. We got hawks. We got coyotes. We. Got... If you're worried about your neighbor's dog, that's the last thing you should be worried about in the neighborhood. Oh yeah, I would think so. Don't worry. <laughs> <right? laughs> that should be the least your worries out in the desert. You know. Is your neighbor's dogs with all the other predators out there, right? <clears throat> Gosh. I mean, I mean, picture this. Now, picture this. All right, I'm picturing it. Okay, you're sitting at the back patio, having a cocktail, just sitting back, watching everything. Uh-huh. You see a flash out of you see a flash out of the right side of your eyes. You look over, and you're like, "What was that?" And all of a sudden, you see a hawk or an owl with a cat in its talons. Oh, geez. Flying. Flying up, like, I don't even know how you're getting that high because I know that cat's at least six pounds. Uh huh. And just flying and flying away. That's Arizona. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not joking. That's yeah, crazy, is what that is. Yeah. Mm mm. Damn. That's nuts. So your, your little small dogs and your cats aren't safe out there, right? 
Uh, I would I would say no. Wow, that's nuts. I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, that's crazy, crazy. Now, Scott, I'm going to change the subject, but I seen you posted. Yeah. I seen you posted something today on <clears throat> Facebook about some museum and something like that. What, what's going on? There? Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. <clears throat> uh, there's a thing going on right now. You know what? I'm in Black Hand City, which most people know. Uh, it's a good home base for me because where I dig is around this particular place. So it's a, it's a great base. Wait, and where you dig? You started digging already? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole Anyhow, other subject. No, actually, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you and Kathleen to come down so we can test the ground. So you guys. Can ah, go cool. Wow. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. You're, you're waiting for us to find the gold for you, guy. <laughs> you see, you know what? Shad is smarter than you think, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> He's right online. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is the thing. It's just a, they're doing a Black Canyon City uh, mineral and museum, mining and mineral, which is cool. And they actually, they, they, they're opening up, but they haven't had a lot of uh, response to the things they're putting out. Right. So I just thought I'd, I'd, throw, I, I, I thought I'd throw it out there because I, I think it's pretty cool. Like if you mail something into them and you, you put your name or a company name, whatever, donated by. Right. They're going to put it under, it's going to be in a museum. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool to me. Yeah, it is cool. But anyway... Yeah, but, uh, I can't remember who it was. They were asking the address. Okay. And the actual address is, got, is Black Canyon Mining Mineral Museum. It's going to be in Harmel Plaza. Might want to spell that. Three. It's H-A-R-M-I-L Plaza. Okay. And 34301S Old Black Canyon Highway. Okay. It's uh, going to actually be in Suite 7. And, of course, it's going to be Black Canyon City, Arizona, 85324. Now, do you know so if they got a website, wants, Scott? Do they? You know what? I don't think they do. This is a really, it's a new thing. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it's coming up. It's like, it's been done, it's been done really fast just because, it's Black Canyon City, and there's always a thing, you know, we, we always have people coming through and right. uh, vacationers and stuff like that. So it's happening pretty fast. Okay. That's pretty cool. But, I mean, anything, like, if you got anything old, uh, Relic, anything you guys want to mail to them, or if you're close enough just to drive it there, mm-hmm. it is, it's, it's we actually, if, if you've been in Black Canyon City, it's pretty much downtown. <laughs> Because there's no uptown. Gotcha. Uh, so it's it's yeah, it's pretty much downtown uh, on the right hand side, and you'll find it. It's just before the Aquafria. Uh, but like I said, it's 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 kind of neat, you know, that they any museum is kind of cool. Oh yeah. And this this yeah, this has got a lot of history behind it. You know, Black Canyon City and Prescott and. This place, and it's like a, a Wickenburg. It's kind of like a triangle okay. with the Bradshaws. So, so I just think I think it's cool to right. preserve it. And if anybody's going to anything, they can donate. Hey, so, so shit, like, like if you had an old dry washer from back in the day, if it don't work, it's just you know they would like, like something a hand like crank that. One, yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> they would like something like that. Old. Just as long as it's old mining there was, equipment. There was not. There wasn't a hand crank one back then. Well, how did it operate? They had one. It was a puffer. Oh, it was well. How did they crank it? They didn't crank it. They lifted it up and down. Poof, 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 poof. The puffer. What did they lift up and down? The lever that operated the bellows. <laughs> wouldn't it been easier to crank it? <laughs> they didn't have cranks back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, Scott's right. They used uh, a a really a really short miner. <laughs> he, st- oh, he stood under guys. the box and lifted it up and down. <laughs> well, it just jumped up and down. Yeah, <laughs> you're making me cough. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, old days. But they would but like stuff like that, old oils. old metal gold pans and stuff like that, old wooden what? sluice boxes. Well, <clears throat> that's cool. That's cool too. But I mean, if you mail it to it, just remember, you know, put your name in there or a company name, whatever you want to be donated by, right? And then send it to them. Oh, okay. Now, if you if you if if you're in the area and you have something that's worth, a, you know, quite a bit of money, I'm not just saying give it to them, right? But you can actually you can actually pull it into the museum and you know and donate it for two months, six yeah, months, right? Until they change. You know, and then you get it back. It's okay. not. It's not that bad. Now, see, that'd be cool. <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that is, and it helps the museum keep a lot of new items on. You know, on display. So that's cool. Exactly. So hopefully, it works out good. You know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I know the, the uh, like the people that, that I've been talking to, Miss Dawn. You know, she's told me a little bit here and there and she's working doing her things but there's all you know it's 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 a museum and man there's a lot of stuff going on but i think it would really work it'd be really cool for this part of the country actually (coughs) any of the museums are cool you know because well i mean you got all the traffic coming down 17 and going up 17 why not stop by and find out just you know what what's going on through the mountains you're traveling through right now it's it's just a mining museum, right? It's a mining and mineral museum. The mining and mineral. And so, and mineral. And so, I believe there's some other stuff in there as well. So if you got some it's cool be, minerals, could you could you donate them? Yeah, you could donate minerals as well. Okay. Uh you know what, just make sure you guys you know how the mail system is, and I'm not saying nothing bad about the mail guys, but right. It is rough. So package it up really good and put who, who it's donated by. If you need it back, I'm sure you could leave a letter saying, hey, after you're done with this, can you please mail it back? Sure. And I'm sure it'll get back to you. Oh, well, sure. <clears throat> I'm sure they would. That's pretty cool. That's why I see. Now, it. hey, Scott, what? Yeah. I, yeah. I might have missed it. Um, what prompted them to want to do this? Uh, like I said, there's uh, been just a. They, these the particular people wanted to have something better for Black Canyon City, and they had a, a place that they couldn't actually do it, so uh-huh. they wanted to start making it. Okay. That's cool. And it's been it's been under construction for I think a little bit over a month, as far as I know. But now they're really kind of like they thought they would find things really faster, closer, and it's not really happening like that. So. But, I mean, like me, I'm going to donate the uh, – I got an old railroad stake out of a mine. It's got like a, <laughs> a, 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 a – what, what do they call that? The, the pick the, – dang it, not the pick. The stake that you actually put in for, to hold the rail down. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it's like really small. Right. It's like dinky. Okay. So it was made for – yeah, it was made for mining rails. So I'm like, well, that's an old piece of wood. But that, that's, that's cool. That's history. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. neat. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Well, hopefully, they, they don't get a lot of people donating some s- stuff to it, and it could be a cool little roadside museum. That'll be neat. Well, I mean, like I, I had some stuff. I, like, I had the two dredges, and I, I think it was Steve Trent. I can't remember. I don't think so. Anyway, I'm just thinking. I gave two things away. I could have put in the museum really, really easy because nobody uses them anymore. Uh-huh. Okay. But I gave I gave I gave them away, so right. I did good. That's cool. But maybe, just maybe, they'll find their way back. They never know. You never know. <laughs> I know, right? So maybe they'll put like old stuff and its newer counterparts in there too. You know, so people can con- kind of compare the, you know, how it's progressed through the years, like old wooden sluice boxes and. One of today's newer sluice boxes, stuff like that. Old gold pan, new plastic gold pan, you know, something maybe, like that. Maybe, but I don't know about the, the new stuff. That's going to be kind of hard because people are still using that. Right, so. but still, I think it'd be cool. Something like that would be pretty neat. That way you could just see the progression, how it's changed. It hasn't changed a whole lot. I think the only thing that's really changed is the materials used for making it, you know. But other than that, it's pretty All much right. the same stuff. So, 
It could be cool. I think it's pretty neat, Scott. When they open, you'll have to do a, a little tour of it and do a Facebook Live or something. And, you know. Well, you know what? I thought about that or a GoPro maybe video, but, man, mm -hmm. it's not, I, I can't do... The thing is, I can't. If I do a video, it's got to be on my YouTube channel. It's got to be about gold. Well, that did. you can do. Just, it. You can still do a Facebook Live so, and put it on your YouTube channel. I could do that. I guess. All right, you could do that, and you could connect your GoPro Eight to your phone and Bluetooth it and use it to do your Facebook Live. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> 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 Really? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you know? Hey, I've looked up on how to do that stuff, and I'm like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I'm looking at my phone, I'm looking at the thing, I'm like, yeah, I still can't do that. Oh, jeez, Scott. What did you get that, hey, it gets, that GoPro for? It gets pretty technical. Oh, it does. Well, you know what? I got the GoPro because I needed a, a new camera. My old camera was not, it was 70 times zoom, man. I can, wow, I can get really close. But anyway, it started just it started to fade after use, and uh -huh. then, uh, I decided if I'm going to get a new camera, why not get one that can do number one what I want it to do and go underwater too, right? For four hundred bucks, right? Four fifty, whatever, right? So uh, it, in the long run, I think I did all right. I mean, you could do a lot of things with the GoPro. There's a GoPro app. There's 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 a lot of stuff you could actually do, which Shad and Kathleen know because they. They they do pretty good with that. Uh -huh. But I'm just yeah I'm just I'm happy to have it. Like there's a lot of footage yeah. like I might have missed back in the day when we were actually doing dry land dredging where I could put it underwater. Uh -huh. And now I got a camera I can do that. So right. Have you filmed anything with it yet? Myself. Yourself. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, I wanted to see it. Well, I want to see how the sound. What I'm checking out. I'm checking out everything. Right. I want to see how the sound is inside, outside. Uh, if you're close to something, I, if you're far away, if the wind's blowing. If I, you're I'm running around, <laughs> you try it while running and carrying it. N no, because then I'd be listening to myself breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about the action shots. I mean, I want to see you try that out. Make right. sure you work. Right. See how shaky it is say, and stuff like that. It's so it got built in oh, stabilization. There's no, no, there's no, there's, there's no shaky. It's top of the line. Well, if you well, that's why we want to see you running and skipping, you know, skip or something and with it and see what kind of video it does. <laughs> yeah, let's say no, Kim. <laughs> no, let's say yes. That would prove that the stabilization hey, works good. I've, you know? I've got Manny, but I'm not <laughs> running and dancing around in my videos. <laughs> It's That's not a no. It's a test. Line. It's kind of like a test, nope. a product test to see how good it is. <laughs> <laughs> a product test. <laughs> That's know. a good way to put it. But no. Yeah, you know that way everybody knows. Oh, it's worth it to buy one. You know because it it you can do this with one. You know. Hey Tim, huh? I got a hundred miles of fence. <laughs> I got a hundred miles of fence to paint, and it's really fun. Uh -huh. You want to come have fun with me? Sure, I like painting. <laughs> <laughs> you liar! <laughs> See, they said you got a camera good enough to make Manny videos with. See, I know. Why aren't I, you making any? I, I, I figured not, we'd have one. There, by now. You guys, I got to. Go. Oh my god! You got a what? You're right. Wait, right. let's hear you, it. I, you, now, look, you people out there in <laughs> Radio people. Land or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you, you people. people. I'm offended. You say, Me too. <laughs> you say, oh, great, great. <laughs> so, now that we got rid of the offended people, let's get back to the real class. Here we go. Anyway, uh -huh. dude, making videos is a special thing with me. I like to make videos, but I like oh, to be God. educational on what I'm doing when I'm doing the videos. I just don't make funny videos, a you guys. A Scorsese? I like to be... <laughs> just do a little <laughs> meet and greet of you I mean, and Manny. I can, I can, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can make funny videos, but that's just not... That's not what I'm... That's not what I do. That's not what I started out to do. It don't have to be funny. I want... I want well, I'm just saying. I want it to be informational. Okay. I want people to know what I'm doing and why okay. I'm doing it. Okay. This is a perfect and it, you and, and Manny. You know 
All right. Well, that's what I'm saying. A little meet and greet. A little like meet and greet with you and Manny. Uh, you know, you tell yeah. them what you, who you are, who Manny is, what you're planning on doing, what Manny's planning on doing. Kind of what you oh just my said, God, you guys, and and that way everybody gets to meet him and be it properly. Know, you, need, you need to do like an unboxing video of Manny, right? He probably got rid of the box already, but you know, he gets still- you know what? No, I've already heard. I've already heard from three people face to face when they go to the dude. That's weird. I'm like, dude, I told you that. It's not I knew weird. That. No, it's not weird. It's cool. They just don't get it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they don't get it. They're not seeing the big picture like we are. See, that's the thing. you got to have that creative Scorsese mind that you have with your video directing and see the big picture that we see. You know? I'm just see saying, it. it is what it is. Right, Chad? You, you, Chad knows. I, I think you're, you're not giving our listeners and members – you know, a lot for what they chipped in and bought sure, for you. Sure, they're really wanting to see this. you got to give us something, Scott. You're letting them down. Hey, little, little I'm dis- not there yet. Little bits and pieces. Pull the reins there, well, white horse. Well. <laughs> white horse. <laughs> natural. Well, hold on. No, wait. Pull the reins back, white horse. Yeah, slow down, Mr. Majestic. <laughs> you know, let me send a mannequin to your house and see how far you get with it. Oh, I'd already. I would already. <laughs> that, <laughs> that didn't sound bad. right. That sounded really. <laughs> Dude, you should be able to get all the way with the mannequin. I'm just saying. Just saying. But we're just saying if you just give us little somethings, you know, little two. Hey, I little, don't mind that. Little I two minute been thingies. Able to do little somethings. Little anythings. Anything. When I get the. Hey, I put pictures on there. Two. <laughs> Manny was having Manny was having a party with dolls outside my that was the window. Only, <coughs> only two we've gotten. There should be daily Manny pictures. At least one picture did, a day. Did you say daily? Daily, one a day. <laughs> okay, let me mail. That's what they do on Instagram, you. right? That's what they. Hey, thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> See. <laughs> I don't have, have to be Instagram. Insta famous. It don't have to be an Instagram, but that's what they do. You picture a day of him getting up in the morning, of him having his coffee, having him standing outside with watching the sunrise and the eagles take cats or whatever. <laughs> Just a picture a day. It gives us a timeline. Oh, then we can follow Manny, and then when you and him do this this debut motion picture video we'll all know who Manny is everybody will know see yeah that's what we're saying okay say I agree right yeah I knew I mean, this just, would back I, I knew this would backfire on me. <laughs> oh it's not backfiring it's perfect it's just this is if you just focus do this little thing one little picture click that's it done you're done for the day click done <laughs> Click, I'm done. <laughs> Are you guys hearing this guy? It's that Click, simple. It's that simple. Okay. It's that All simple. Right, whatever. It's that simple. I swear it is. Try it. Give it a shot. You'll see. Click, click, click. Okay? Let's just try it for us. That's all we ask. It's a mannequin. <laughs> we know, but we want to see it. Click. Click, click. Click. Picture a day. You know what? If I if I start I'm gonna be the weird guy at camp if I start doing that. No, you're not. You're going to be the cool guy at camp. Oh, no, no. Yes, I will be. This the is cool Arizona. Guy. I know you're going to be the cooler guy at camp because you're in Arizona. See? Uh-huh. Just, I don't believe that's the way it works out here, oh, buddy. I but do. anyhow. <laughs> just try it for us. Humor us and just try it. And Yeah, they're going to be asking me why, how come I don't get a check. Let's just test the water. <laughs> well, you you will if you listen to us. You're apt to get huge checks you know from what? YouTube. I'll put on I'll put on big rubber boots too. <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> See, you, you guys are so out of your mind, dude. <laughs> I think you should be in a pair of hip, pair of hip waders. <laughs> that's what you should be. In. <laughs> yep, that would work. And put Manny in. Now, that's not so hard. That is not so hard right now because we have great water coming down to uh, Black Candy Creek right now because we just had rain the other night. And I thought it was going to be a sprinkle. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was a holy crap. 
on top of my trailer. It like kept me up almost half the night, like waves. You could hear like just waves of rain. I was like, wow, this is crazy. What was it doing? So it's like, (laughs) (laughs) I knew you wanted it. I'm just saying. It was like, you know what waves of rain sounds like across a, a trailer? Yeah, it sounds like. It was whoosh, great. Whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it was absolutely, I mean, it was great for sleeping, but man, I was like, dude, this really sucks. <laughs> because I actually just, I got, a, I got a dry washer from a friend that wants me to test it out, and I got to put some stuff in, and then I actually got another dry washer, a 151, for a great price from a good guy in Sun City. Uh-huh. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention his name, but anyway, it was a great price. Uh-huh. And uh, the next day it rained, and I thought, you know what? That's my luck this year. You guys, I'm telling you what, I've had the luck of the. I mean, if you could have a monkey throw crap in my face at the zoo, I would probably be more happier. <laughs> <laughs> it, Dang. It's been that bad. It's been that bad of a year. It has been that bad of a year. But what's really great is because I touched out the old Brian from last week, uh-huh. asked him why he left. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, no. He goes, oh, I was just giving you crap on the show. I'm like, oh, really? Because uh, I was expecting you to be a partner. So he's going to come back. Yeah. He's going to come back. He said he's going to come back. I'm like, all right, great, man. I said, you know what? It's like two birds, one stone. I need you to help me get stuff in there, and you need a place to dig till April. At the same time I leave. I'm like, why not? You just dig on my claim. You do your videos. I do mine, and we all just have a good time. He's like, all right, cool, dude. I'll I'll be back up there. And I I think he's out in uh, Morriston right now, or Morristown, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bill. Shoot. What? Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I, 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 I think so. But yeah, so he's coming oh, back he's, up there to dig with you. No, he's, yeah, he's, no, he's a great metal detector out there. Dang it. Oh, who, who, he, who he's up there with? Yeah, he's out there in Morristown right now. With, with it's Bill, Bill Southern. Su- Bill Southern. Yeah, Bill Southern. Oh, there we go. Uh-huh. I got it. Dang it. See, I almost forgot. But no, he's out there. He's doing some stuff with him this weekend and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, get back up here Tuesday and we'll just partner up and do it. Uh So I think he's going to come back. And what's really, really cool is because if uh, he's going to be digging on the claim, I'm going to get him on the gold show. Okay. Okay. He said he would. uh, You give me eight. He he said he'd be. You give me eight hours. You give me eight hours a day, Tim, to pry somebody, I'm going to get you on the gold show. Oh, he'd hope so. <laughs> We'd hope so. Oh yeah, that's no, cool he, though. He, Good, you'll have a partner up there with you then. Yeah, what's cool is because you know what? He's a good guy. He's a great guy. To, great, great guy to hang around with and everything like that. And I watched his videos and I'm like, you know what? Be a great guy to have on the gold show. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, he said he'd come. He'd be a guest one night. Come on and talk a little bit about what he's doing up there, because even Rich said he had some questions for him. So that's cool, you know. Cool. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we're gonna get him up there. I'll tell you. All right, all right. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, you know, definitely sounds like a well, plan. All right. Well, and with that, how about I, we look at some gold prices? That's what I was just about to say. You would read my mind, Shad. Thank you. I read your mind. You're a genius. Gump. Give me that gold footage. <laughs> all right. Well. Gold has kind of been going up and down a little. It's back up three dollars at one thousand five hundred and seventy-one. Okay, that's okay. All right. it's, it's all right. Okay. Uh, silver it's about though, sixteen. Silver's down eleven cents at seventeen dollars and fifty-four cents. Ah, dang it! Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Just Platinum is down eight dollars at nine hundred and sixty-three. Okay. So. Interesting, but uh, palladium that went up twenty dollars at two th- or forty two dollars at two thousand three hundred and forty five. Nice. So that oh, really what the shot poop? Up. That's a good one. What the poop? <laughs> what the poop? <laughs> and that dang rhodium is it at eleven thousand yet? Well, it only went up by seventy five dollars, oh, really? so it's sitting at ten thousand eight hundred and fifty. <laughs> I figured. What? 
<laughs> Man, what are they using that stuff for that's making that much money? I Whatever just don't it is, it. they're using a lot of it, apparently. Because <laughs> it just keeps Yeah, I don't think up. we know about it. That's what's funny. Yeah, some secret government program they're using. That hey, for. I didn't, uh, number one, Gold Prospector Space never said anything about the government whatsoever. And <laughs> anything that was said by anybody on here didn't mean anything anyway. Thank you. <laughs> right. <Anyway. laughs> just saying. It's like them UFOs in Area 51. You know, just saying. <laughs> Do you guys believe you know in that? Really funny? That's down there by you know US, Scott, thought, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought about UFOs as one thing. People's like, what is that? What's a bright light? What is it? I don't know. Well, it's a bright it, light. <laughs> it's an unidentified flying object. It's a UFO. It don't matter. It could have been a plane. You don't know. Right. If you can't identify it, it's I, unidentified. I'm going to say this. I have seen some weird stuff. Okay. Now, does that necessarily mean I believe in aliens? No, I really don't. You don't? Proof. No. You don't really? Well, then you're a nut. You're I a don't nut. know. I don't know. I'm not, whatever. I'm you undetermined. I don't have enough science. Okay, the- theory-wise, I get it. Yeah, surely yeah, there has to be something. We can't be some amazing evolutionary spec, right. you know, out of a whole universe. All right. So we're, we're somebody's science project. Yeah, so I get that, but <laughs> I have seen some weird stuff happen in my life. Uh-huh. And crystals are real. See, crystals <laughs> are real. <laughs> yeah. But but you don't believe in in aliens. I don't know. I mean, I I, do. I don't believe in like what Hollywood and you, you mean, right, maybe the that concept right, the Hollywood aliens. crap part, but but yeah. but when you look back and, and you watch some of these shows like the ancient aliens and stuff, some of that stuff is no kind of, men in black or men in black. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true hey, one right there. I, yeah, <laughs> I got I got one thing to say. Isn't it funny that for the last fifty years, yep. people say they see aliens. They still look the same way in drawings. Yeah, isn't that well, kind of funny? They don't change in fifty years. No. All right. Right? Are you crazy? What? Well, no. Like we still look like people. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I know what you're saying, Kathleen. So well, what? what if? What if they were just people in costumes? <laughs> what if making you believe Jesus aliens Lord. look like tall that's, men with the green heads, no, that's, and long that's, fingers? That's Bigfoot, Shad. That's Bigfoot. I'm just Shad. saying. That's just, that's you Bigfoot. don't know, man, because you haven't <laughs> seen it. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe Bigfoot is really an alien. Maybe that could okay, be. Okay, now we're getting we're going way <laughs> like, like, kind of like a Wookie, a Chewy, you know? Right. Yeah, but hey, uh, say what kind of scotch is that? And again, <laughs> you know, I don't know who, how we brought up alien stuff when I, don't I was either. trying to get to birthdays. Yeah, get to birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were we trying to figure out if it's aliens needing uh, rhodium so they're coming to the good old uh, Earth to, and we're so. selling it to yeah, them? Yeah, they're mining it for us or is, something. Is that where Scott was going? And rhodium. That's, yeah, and that's they're alien just, rates. Hey, dude, why don't you just get on with the birthdays? Let's rock and roll with this. <laughs> Birthday. All right. Well, it is February the 12th, two days hey, before are you gonna sing? Valentine's Day. <laughs> And we have Bill Boxall, Bill Grafman, Ooh. Brad Guy, Breck Fry, Carl E. Spears, David Mead, Joe Bauer, Kevin Hill, Larry Carr, Leroy B. Dykes Jr., Nugget Hunter, Ooh. Pat Gibney, Phil Bill, <laughs> Ray <laughs> Zettler, Rob H., Robert Anderson, Scott Chambers, Steve Durham, and oh. Wayne Wolven. And then tomorrow, I can only see Aaron Harris, Brian C. Lovejoy. It's A. A. No, no, only one A, so it's A. Ron. Oh, Oh, it's not not A. A. Ron. Ron. Okay. Are you saying there's only two guys tomorrow? Well, no, that's because the list only allows to display so many of the birthdays. David Bogans was yesterday. Yep, David Bogans. No, I was... Doc Rose was was yesterday. I was going to actually put that in history. If there's two guys as, as... birthday one day two guys that's gonna be that's cool. it on the entire planet two guys have birthdays i know right <laughs> two guys at one time <laughs> uh, lord help us 
<laughs> so, all right, yeah, we, we need to we, pick somebody. That was a lot of names. Yeah. We need to highlight somebody. Pick him one. Um, beep, boop, 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 beep. Good man, good this, good is, this is a tough one to choose from. <laughs> oh, no, no. All right, yeah, let's do <laughs> Phil Bill. Phil Bill. I like that oh, yeah. name. That's a cool name. Phil right. Bill. <laughs> from East Dorset, Vermont. So, a New Englander. Um, what type of prospecting does he do? Do None. Do you belong in any clubs? No. <laughs> How did you find the site? YouTube. <laughs> Refer you to the site. YouTube. <laughs> what, what kind of equipment do you use? Dry washers. <laughs> Do you know this is a gold prospecting site? No. <laughs> no. Why are you signing up? Because you told me to. I see it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad. Oh, a customer. I mean, <laughs> a member. I wonder whose uh, video yeah, he's seen. Uh, yeah, that's a- December 28, 2014. So I wonder whose video I- it was. Yours? <laughs> Scott's or Dennis's. No, this, this is uh, before Shad and Cat. <laughs> I have been one of so far. I'm just glad you noticed that he's from Vermont <laughs> and he has a dry he's washer. Dry washer. <laughs> Vermont. <laughs> yeah. he doesn't do any prospecting. None. Oh, no. good heavens. Good pick. Oh, my belly good, good pick, Shad. <laughs> You know, and you can thank Kathleen for the suggestion on who to Good job, pick. Kathleen. I just picked that one out of the blue. That one's an awesome one. That's a winner. That was Why like, yeah, that, you would have thought that one was. I mean, you know, a guy has a sense of humor when his name's Phil Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's being funny about the dry washer or if he's serious. He <laughs> it's just fun. What type of prospect? <laughs> None. Who refer or what do you belong in any clubs? No. Who referred you? YouTube. Dry washer. Oh, oh, I got I got tears in my eyes. It's just that's just oh, ooh, that's classic. That's that's like you can't you you could write it. Evidently, somebody did. But that was pretty funny. You know, it does make Ooh. me wonder what else are funny, interesting profiles are out there on Old Prospect. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. sure there's a bit. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm sure, yeah, there's, there, yeah, there has to be more like that, that, you know, that just make no sense, actually. <laughs> but it was good stuff. Couldn't make that stuff up. That was great, Chad. Can't yeah, blame, but, thank you. You know what, just remember, when you, when you sign up for Gold Prospector Space, you know what? Actually, say what you're actually into because you, it kind of focuses your things on what's going on with what you do. Well, yeah, it'll absolutely. be helpful. If so- and remember, you can update your profile and yeah. the answers to those questions anytime. Right. So tell us about your journey. Yeah, that this site and members have helped you along your prospecting. Well, right, but if you put in that information, like you go to the search box and type in Maine dry washing, and that guy's name would pop up, see? So that's what's cool about that. You just put that stuff in, and then in the search box, it works. <laughs> hey, hey, Tim, you, you get emails from people from Go Boss Pleasure Space, right? Uh-huh. Well, like like Shed was saying, if, you, if somebody actually found a lot of help from what we do, That'd be a cool guest to have on the show, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, usually they just post it on the site, though, stuff like that. Have we ever helped anybody? I wonder. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I really I wonder. You guys. For all these years. <laughs> you know, sure, there's got to be one. There's got to be. Going into the dream sequence right now. You know, yeah, it's got to be I mean, We've all learned some stuff from being on this show and listening, right? Right. I mean, I hope. I think some people learn more than yeah. others, you know, like Rich's segments for Cooley's Corners. He gives great tips, yeah, exactly. but you can also learn hey, just don't pay money on the internet for claims. You need to test and do this yeah. and all these diligent. Right. You know, and then there's good things to learn. Sure. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, we also learned to... We uh, learned fun facts. Fun right. facts. History, fun facts, stuff like um, the news. learned never to eat um, <laughs> pudding, unicorn rainbow pudding <laughs> in the desert that's been out for days. Don't do that. Shit. Yeah, that would be bad. Thank yeah. you, Weigold. <laughs> <laughs> that was a uncomfortable plane ride home. <laughs> I will oh, say, I we did the last show when we talked about answering that question. What did you learn from your last year, you know, to oh, hopefully yeah. not repeat this year? Right. That is one thing we definitely learned. Don't eat unicorn pudding in the desert and then get on a plane, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to remember, you know. You, I, I'd have to try it again if it's refrigerated, not I don't, sitting out for two days in the I desert. I don't think I would try it so again. what you're saying is, like, if you ordered badger milk and it showed up on your step for two days, you wouldn't drink that. And then get on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Would you even drink badger milk that's set on your steps for two days? If no. I was thirsty. Uh, no, I wouldn't drink nothing that's set for two days. I definitely don't think I would have ate. If pudding. you were dying of thirst and that's oh. all you found, yeah. Oh, oh my gosh! Would. Now I want to tell you some. <laughs> He's stealing my thunder. <laughs> no, okay, you go ahead. Oh my you god! You drink oh. your own pee. That's what happens. You just drink your no, own no, pee because no. you're dying. This show. We, like, <laughs> That wait, <laughs> let me hear Kathleen. Kathleen, what? Say it. There's a show we've been binge watching called oh. "I Shouldn't Be Alive." Okay, I, uh, and it's about these people who get themselves into the most horrible situations where nobody knows where they are. They're wandering the desert for days, not prepared, right? And they're like, you know, I survived, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But there are a ton of Arizona. Desert oh really? Stories. And every time we watch it, we get really thirsty. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting here, like all these people, whether they're floating on a raft in the ocean or in stranded in the desert, and they they're showing their dry lips. We're like, we're chugging water all the time. <laughs> like, you. You're right. It does. I've never well, thought of it. I will, right. I will say. <laughs> 80% of the stories on there are because the people were stupid and didn't know what the heck they were doing. Agreed. That's what I was getting ready to say. Now, 20% was, um, were genuine, like something went wrong, and they really were wrong. Yeah, right. really wrong. Plane crash, helicopter crash, yeah, or something yeah, crazy. Legitimate. Yeah, legitimate. Yes, yeah, yeah, legitimate. Yep. But the other eight, like, the one, okay, but... this one cracked me up. Now, the lady did, obviously, I survived, <laughs> so you know they're fine. Though some people do die in the group, and they leave them. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. But this one, this lady was, I think, celebrating year... Like, a year of college, <laughs> right? What sad? Right, and then she lived out in Arizona, uh-huh. and she so she's college age and decided, you know what, I'm going to go hiking in the desert. Right. So... She takes the wrong turn in the Grand Canyon, right? Mm-hmm. If she would have went to the right, she would have made it back just fine. Well, she went oh, left, Lord. right? Okay. And then, but here's what's funny: <laughs> she thought for sure she made the right choice because she remembered on the other map or something that hey, there's a village right up here. I'll be fine, right? Yeah. And she was like, "My back's really hurting me. This pack with all my food and stuff is I'll I'll just come get it later because I, I'll be at camp <laughs> oh, by three hours. Right? Oh, she freaking leaves it. She leaves it behind. Come on. Has her little dog. No water, no blankets, just shorts and a t-shirt, and wander and like realizes at night she oh, was out there for twenty days. Twenty what? days, she found like a little watering hole from following wild horses. She never went she back never- and got her pack. No, she that's what I said. She got, lost. <laughs> she got lost. Oh, she got lost from her pack too. Yeah. So she well, got see, lost twice. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, it was a little watering hole, and the dog lived. She died. No, the dog ran <laughs> off away from and he her. He found the village. <laughs> he, yeah, okay. he, he got the safety before she did. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, hey, when somebody, when someone, something goes, man, I'm really thirsty. You better follow that guy. Follow that dog. That dog will get you some. Oh my god! I know, I can't like the dog it. was obviously trying to tell her, "Hey, I think there's water over here. Come, come get it." And she right. like got mad and walked away. <laughs> oh my god! See, that's yeah, that's just like you said. That's just ignorant. You said now, your pack. Now, trust phenomenal. me. There, it's not. It's, 
you know, okay, I know what people think. You know, she was a dumb blonde woman. Uh-huh. All right, no, because there's some crazy ones of guys making really <laughs> blatant the mistake. dumbest things ever. Right. But a lot of times, one thing I learned with the desert stories, it all comes down to <laughs> one moment. They take a wrong turn. Right. <laughs> we take the they wrong always turn. go the wrong way. <laughs> they, so it's like, hmm, should I go this way or this way? They should stick to their first guess, obviously. I'm just saying, coming from a guy out here in the desert, let me just say this. Don't make a turn if you know where you're going. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's and make line. sure you have it's plenty a- of extra water if you, whenever you do go out. And just follow the crows. Right. Follow the crows. Extra, extra <laughs> Obviously, they're you going from one period. person to another. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's crazy. But this is true. I- well, there are some dangerous desert ones, too. Like in uh, the southern part, the... They ha- they ran into like um, human traffickers. Yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah. See, that'd be bad. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. here, okay. You know we Put yourself real quick in this Please. scenario. All right. Okay. So you got a man who's dating a single uh, a mom with two girls, young girls, young kids, right? Right. And they're just announced they went on a pickup. She's grown up out in this area her whole life. Mm-hmm. The guy, though, is from a totally different New city, Jersey. New Jersey, yeah, okay. out in Arizona. He's got him a dry washer in New Jersey. Okay. No. <laughs> but, okay. Bill Bill. <laughs> so their car, they, they break down. Uh-huh. Right? And, and they were going somewhere, and she all of a sudden is confused where she's at. They decide after, you know what, nobody knows they're out here. They didn't tell anybody. They can't stay with the vehicle, so they walk off, you know, trying to go help. Well, they could get so far, and the kids were like, okay. I'll, the guy was like, I'll go ahead. Who doesn't know this area, <laughs> right? From New Jersey. From New Jersey, <laughs> and leaves breadcrumbs, basically, the, the way he goes. Well, she, the lady's like, something's not right. So <laughs> she gets the kids and goes walk, and she gets to this intersection, of a road, basically an old road, and she and she re- recognizes the whole area. She knows if she goes left over those uh, the little mountains, the town's right there. Right. If she goes right, it just takes you out further into the middle of nowhere, almost <laughs> along the border of the U.S. and Mexico. Great. Well, the guy left kick. breadcrumbs to the right, mm-hmm. so she went the wrong way. What do you think she decided to do? I don't know. Go to the right, even though she knew she'd be okay to oh, the left. Geez. Really, she followed the. And then down. one night they ran into like a vehicle comes, and evidently it was human traffickers, which are known down there. Mm-hmm. And um, but she had a shotgun and scared them all. Oh, nice. At least she. Was but it prepared. was just a hot mess of a story. <coughs> it really was. Unreal. And it made me thirsty. And it made you thirsty. Well, of course it does. All them ones, like you said, when you're out there. In a rubber right life raft, and your lips are all <laughs> cracked. Oh, I hate the ocean ones. <laughs> oh, that's you got horrible. Salt water all I'd around you. Be the desert. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think I so. Think that's like the worst way to go. It is. Well, I don't know the jungle. I don't want to ever be lost in the jungle. No, that would suck. Like the too. Amazon. But yeah, it'd probably be easier you to get water better. than. <laughs> I think the the ocean would be worse because you're surrounded by water, nothing to drink. That would and you be at the yeah, mercy of the wind, everything. Yeah, yeah, that would just be the because it just mess with Sharks. your mind. Yeah, yeah, you're so thirsty, and there's all this water, yeah. but you can't. Yeah, drink I can't it. drink it. <laughs> that would just mess with your mind so bad. It'd it be, would. That's like wrong. That the sun. Yeah, that's just wrong right there. That, that's a cruel trick. It'd kill you. It's what it is. It's like that just ain't right. So. I think that would be worse than than anything. I don't know, but then add being stranded on top of a mountain. Yeah. In a deep crevasse. Oh, yeah. Or on the cliff on a ledge for like 17 <laughs> Did days. Did he say crevasse? Crevasse. He, he said crevasse. He fell on a crevasse. <laughs> yeah, you guys fell on a crevasse. <laughs> I just like to say crevasse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you say crevice or Cravat, he fell in a deep crevasse. Instead of, <laughs> man, where, that boy where fell I down come, a deep crevice. You're right. <laughs> where I come Light from, it's called climbing down a rope. 
I always called it crevice. A crevice. <laughs> yeah, a crevice. <laughs> or crevice. Okay, whatever. A crevasse. I like crevasse. I like crevasse, too. Sc- it sounds elegant, refined. Scott should put in his monocle yeah. and say crevasse. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, your monocle. I'm not crevasse, no, anything. Get your monocle yeah. and your top no. hat and say, "Do not pass crevasse." No, no. <laughs> Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, Tim, you're so gonna get it. <laughs> Just say it, crevasse. Interesting stuff. Kathleen, did you have any news tonight? I actually do. Oh. Thank Is God, it about save the show. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Let's uh, let's do let's do our quick commercial, and and we'll come back with some news. What do you think? Sounds good. All Thank right, God. we'll be right back, everybody. Do you like to mine for gold, enjoy prospecting a nice crack in the bedrock, enjoy getting outdoors to camp, fish, hunt, and hike on your public lands? You plan your trip, load the gear, grab the dog, put the family in the truck, and drive off to a locked gate. A sign says you cannot enter or access your own public lands. Mining claims and public land owned by we the people are being designated as off limits by our own government every single day. Are you concerned about the direction our government is going? Are you tired of seeing no access, no entry signs on your lands? We are, and we are fighting back. We are AMRA, America Mining Rights Association, the fastest growing small mining advocacy association in America. AMRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit formed by miners, hunters, off-roaders, retired military men, and women to stop the insanity. AMRA was formed to educate, unite, and help the small miners and public land users on their rights. Rights given to us by God. Do you want access to great mining claims? For a small tax-deductible donation to their Miners Legal Fund, your family gains access to proven excellent mining claims across America for an entire year. AMRA challenges the USFS, BLM, EPA, and the other agencies intent upon stopping you from enjoying your own lands. You are who pays these people's wages. It is time they listen to us. We need to unite. And that is what AMRA is doing. As you sit here right now, thousands of acres of public lands are being closed, locked, and blocked from use by you. Are you fed up yet? Join us. Get in on this fight and let's restore America to what our families fought and died for. Freedom. Just visit AmericanMiningRights.com. AmericanMiningRights.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at American Mining Rights Association. AmericanMiningRights.com. It is time for Dredging Up the News with Kathleen Biffle. Mining news from around the globe. Metal detecting, dredging, entertainment news, and fun facts as well. Here's Kathleen. All right, everybody. February twelfth. Oh, can you believe February is halfway over I almost? Know. Crazy. Technically yeah. not yet because it's a leap year, so there's an extra day. Uh, but it still. would be the exact halfway point if it was a regular year today. Uh, well, but still, 15th. no, it's only twenty eight days in February. Whatever. Right. Okay, we can't even get past the date. <laughs> Wait, fourteenth is <laughs> Valentine's Day. Is the mid? All right. All right. I'm going to start off with a, a local story. It's here in the Midwest, actually. And I, I, and I want to thank Rob in Kansas. He's out there. He sent me a couple articles that, you know, my news was looking kind of thin. So I was really um, running out of time. So he, it was very, very helpful. But awesome. he sent this one. Oh, very cool. It's a story in Michigan. After uh, finding cash <laughs> hidden in a thrift store footstool, a Michigan man went out to find the original owners. His name is Howard Kirby. He said that he had the ottoman for weeks before noticing that it was kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) He he said the footstool just didn't feel right. Uh, Well, that's what happens when someone stashes $43,000 inside and apparently forgets about it. (laughs) Jesus. So the money was discovered inside the footstool and this footstool was donated to uh, habitat for humanity where howard went and bought bought it for like 70 dollars mm-hmm. uh, this was just right after christmas 
Man. Well, when they found the money, he was shocked. And now he is looking, or he, he went, he did find the owners. Really? He gave back. Okay. Legally, you know, they said, though, he was entitled to the cash. <clears throat> All right, here's a, here's a quick question, though. I own this ottoman with $43,000, and I'm going to donate it to a thrift store. Yep. Isn't that a little odd? If you had forty three thousand dollars, they didn't in know. Ottoman, they did. The people that owned it didn't know that they donated. It was her grandfather who passed. Oh, they cleaned out the house. That, okay, that's what I was Honestly, looking for. They didn't Donate. check the couch cushions. <laughs> they did it. Uh, yeah, they didn't check. Is, yeah. is, is Rich sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> he's, he's snoring. Hang on, hang on. Be quiet. Shh. Who? <laughs> <laughs> that no. is hilarious. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I'm trying to do the news, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, I know for people, but <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back on. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I can't stop laughing. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I'm just gonna skip to global news. I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, gotta get, I gotta get my composure. Yeah. Hold on. Well, let's let's I be need professional. A drink. I, a sip of water. Okay, it's a golf show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. Uh, <laughs> oh my sorry. Why don't you just come to the bit <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> you want me to start snoring again? Yeah, her down. Hey, do, do you see? Do you oh, see Rich. what happens when you go out hunting all the time? Thank and you, Rich. You go with meat raffles. Uh, <laughs> He's tired from loading up that freezer of all his meat. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that was that was priceless. Thank you. That was priceless. That was amazing. oh, dude! I heard it like I was like, really? <laughs> That's awesome. I thought I was hearing something funny. But <laughs> I, did, I, know. I did too, but wasn't sure. Then that one was a sure one. It was like, it's <laughs> <laughs> like <Put> my ass asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so you, okay, I got I got to keep going. Go Are you going or am I going? I'm I, I can go. All right. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do a story, a quick, quick one first. In the UK, in December, more than 40 skeletons were found with their hands tied behind their backs, and they were Ooh. discovered at a construction site. The discovery was made while the workers were preparing former farmland for a new development of apart uh, retirement apartments in southern England when they came across this. But... Is they're speculating that the remains date back to the Anglo-Saxon um, period in Britain. This lasted from the fifth <laughs> to, <laughs> to the eleventh. What? I don't know. I'm typing. What? I don't know what the hell you guys are laughing oh, about. Oh mercy! <laughs> yeah, I'm. Not, I'm a cool man. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> um, they're said to be dated back from the Anglo-Saxon Britain, which lasted from about the 5th to 11th century AD, <laughs> or the English Civil Wars. So there's uh, more to come on that one. Okay. Um, they did take the oh, remains to... <laughs> what the hell was that? What was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I mean, that wasn't rich. That thing was Scott. <laughs> He's falling apart. <laughs> oh, Lord. I guess so. Oh, mercy. Continue on, Kathleen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is painful. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, they're, they're sending the remains off. 
uh, to archaeolo- this archaeologist's place to see and if they can date the the remains. Oh wow! Okay, that's cool. Uh, that's kind of weird. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's interesting. Story. It's like they're always digging up some crazy things over there in England. Always, always. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that they can give back. But it's the when they dig up the cool stuff, they got to give it to the queen, right? Yes, yes, got they it. do. Mm-hmm. But not that they're not going to give the remains to the queen. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? I just had that same talk tonight with somebody else. What talk about metal detecting and about, finding something? <laughs> no, I mean about like what you're saying about the, uh, giving back to the queen, or like we're here, like Wells Fargo. If you find something with that on it, you got to give it back to the bank. What? Because right. they're still alive. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, you didn't know that. No, I, I did not. No. Know that. <laughs> no, I did not know that one. I'm just saying, if you find a treasure, shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's our well, motto. Except in England. <laughs> Well, no, in England, if you find anything worth something like it goes to the queen and she decides if you get something off of it or not, it's about the queen. Right. Here in America, if we find a treasure, if it's got Wells Fargo or anything oh, like yeah. that, I'm that, that down. yeah, you're going to get it. It's going to be taken away. All right. Just, we do not condone just, not supporting treasure. We treasure. are. <laughs> I just say we're gold diggers and treasure hunters for, for a reason. Mm-hmm. We're not giving anything back. I'm giving it to the queen. <laughs> the All queen. right, last story, and I'm going to turn this over to Shad. Okay. Um, this Ooh. one came from Coin Week. Rob also sent this one to me. Okay. Um, a 1776 centennial dollar just got certified, hmm. and it was found in a junk box. For 50 cents. The owner, who wishes to remain anonymous, anonymous, <laughs> is from northern <laughs> France. He uh, said that he bought the coin in June of 2018 at a flea market. The seller evidently had a box full of just miscellaneous coins and metals for sale. Right. Uh, so he ended up paying 50 cents for it. But he looked wow. at it closely, and he Googled centennial currency and found out that it was a 1776 one mm-hmm. that he had. So he thought, um, I think I found a treasure. He took it to a local coin dealer to get it authenticated. Um, so they <laughs> didn't really know there either, so he sent it off to the United States. <laughs> To get it authenticated, and guess what? It is legit. Okay, it is actually very, very rare um, to find one of these. Uh, what they think it was, what they think these coins were. They thought that they were made back in the day in 1776 as a, like a satire, like um, a pre- you know, like uh, what do you call a funny counterfeit trinket? Oh, gag uh, gift. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. As a satire, because that was the year, of, of course, that, you know, the unrest in the sure. uh, colonies. America, and was, America born. was born. America was born. America, yeah. So that's what they think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's just rare, it, it's actually worth $97,000. Wow. Holy, holy. What a find. <laughs> Man. That's a sweet. I mean, they, they even... Um, Made it out of pewter, kind of really? like to make fun of it, right? Like it was a United States kind of like. I'll be darned. Yeah. Jokes on you. That's right. exactly. <laughs> Jesus, man, that no, that's a sweet one. Real yes. nice. That'd be cool, man. Some people just fall into that luck. Mercy, very. That's cool. crazy. That's cool though. Mm-hmm. It's like winning the lottery, man. It, it pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, just a bit. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Man, nice. Well, way to go on that one. Good. So I'm going to turn this over to Shad Alrighty. for local events of interest. All righty, Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. Riveting as always. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> way to go, Rich. All right. So looking really quick on Gold Prospector Space first, um, 
Well, if you're still bored and you're in Roseburg, Oregon, the longest show ever, a club <laughs> meeting is still going on at the Grove Community Church, Pine Grove, that is, <laughs> until November 9th, 2020. <laughs> now, the 2020 Indiana, Indiana Gold Prospector season kickoff, cons and party dinner. It's uh, February 29th from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Boone County 4-H Fair. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I can attest that is one uh, prospecting club that knows how to, you know, take care of their members and dinners and the food. That's right. It's awesome. They're good to go. That is cool. So pretty cool there to get get ready for, well, this year's season. The 2020 season, right? The 2020 season. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana gold season. Nice. All right, so let's let's take our little trip out to Wickenburg, Arizona. Uh, this weekend on Valentine's Day, February 14th through the 16th, it's Gold Rush Days Festival. Now, this is a tradition that dates back all the way to 1948. Mm-hmm. You know, and to commemorate this, uh, they're going to have, of course, gold panning, you know, a carnival, western dancers, and uh, arts and crafts, but also the senior rodeo. <laughs> now, this <laughs> is one event I really would like to have more information on. Me too. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. senior rodeo. If you are in the area, other than Scott, who will never do anything, right? Um, <laughs> we need to know is funny, the senior the rodeo. <laughs> Consisting of persons over the age of like sixty or whatever, right? Or is it referring to the animal, the bull? Bean. Is it an elderly Bean. bull? Yes, exactly. I need to know because it fascinates me, and I don't understand. But it happens every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night that weekend. Right. So these are good questions, and, and this is like a professional thing, right? Hey, do some. Um... Roving reporting and see if you can find out. Right? And take Manny with you. Yeah, and get some answers. Is it senior people or senior bulls? I can hear you. Well, well, hope, <laughs> hopefully, yes. I'm sure somebody I can, I, Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. You're, you're so, on it, right? You'll take care of that. Okay. Maybe. I mean, come on. This is going to have, you know, the fourth largest parade in the state. The fourth, you know, yeah. The fourth largest. The fourth. It blows everything else after the. That's right. The fourth. It's better than the fifth. And the sixth. Exactly. You know what? You guys, the sixth. I just, I just asked Brian to come back and to be hooked up with me and get going. I don't have time for all that stuff. Oh, here we go again. Okay, continue. Shit. <laughs> I don't have time. Hey, let's get the Daytona Five Hundred. <laughs> yeah, let's watch some NASCAR. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Hey, wait. That's totally different. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some Keystone Light. Right, did, but... you, did you? Well, no. Wait. Did you guys stop and watch the Super Bowl? Nope. No. I did. Yes, I did, Scott. Yes, I did. Who nope. did? We totally did. did. None of us did. Not none of us did. Nope. Nope. Not a one we, of us. We, we had a fellow, we had a radio show that That's night. Right. We did. <laughs> All right, well, back to local events, Scott. You're you're done. Shut up. I don't. You know what? You're right. I don't care. I'm a race fan. Go, go All go right. Race. So also this weekend, and this kicks off tomorrow on a Thursday. Uh, it's the 2020 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. Uh, now this is open to the public. It goes on through the 16th. So all weekend fun. Um, you know, it's held at the Tucson Convention Center. Now, you have to get tickets, uh, that, you know, which are already on sale or buy them at the door. But this is a pretty big thing out there that actually expands out and spills out into the street. So cool. a lot of cool stuff there. And then, of course, coming up in just a, a few more weeks here is the uh, GPAA Phoenix Golden Treasure Show in yeah. Arizona Woo! there. March 7th through the 8th uh, at the Arizona State Fair. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, uh, the doors open at 10 a.m. Uh, both days, there's a lot of perks. If you're first 100, 200 people, you get you know a little vial of gold. Mm-hmm. Um, I think every gold show the GPA is having, they're 
throughout that weekend pouring in the three ounces of gold I into know. the panning booth. It's crazy. So, and, and this will be Kathleen and mine's first West Coast GPA gold show besides Vegas, yeah. right? Yeah. Besides Vegas. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I'm anxious to see because I know there's a lot of, you know, vendors, sure. local businesses out there that have been around forever. So, it'll be cool to kind of see. Hopefully, they all come out. Right. Come out and see us. Yep. Heck Scott yeah. will be um, talking. also talking mm-hmm. about stuff. Right. Um, we'll see. That'll be cool. We'll be I, there you know to what? support so. him. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be um, cool. But yeah, no, it should be a great time. We'll be there. Scott, of course, will be there. Mm-hmm. Come hang out. Heck yeah. At the Arizona you know what? Fairgrounds. That's right. What, you know what? I, I sent my stuff to Kevin, and I haven't had a received mail or like, yeah, I got it or anything like that. So Shannon? I hope I No, do. Kevin. Oh. You need to send yeah, him. A, you need to send him another message and just go, dude. I would and stuff. tell him. Yeah. we have been announcing and promoting this ever since he said he wanted you. Yeah. So I, I this, know, and I've been saying the same thing. So yeah. I'm, I'm just. Saying. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm just saying. All right. If Scott's not on the roster to talk, we'll make sure he gets a little stool and out in the parking lot and you can hear from him. Okay, good. Oh, One way or another, Scott guy. will be talking about something. Good. To people. Good. At the Gold Show. Are we going to do a show from the Gold Show? We'll go live. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, it will probably just show Scott all at a quarter a load, all sad. <laughs> <laughs> he right. doesn't really want to listen to him. <laughs> and he he misses Manny because he doesn't want to bring Manny right, out. Right. It's separation anxiety. Is what it is. I understand. Yeah, Manny's not coming to the gold show. Well, it just further in- strengthens the fact Manny needs to be there regardless That's right. some way. Agreed. <clears throat> but while we ponder that thought, mm-hmm. I'll kick it back to Kathleen here oh, to yeah, finish right. up. For fun facts. Okay. Thank you, Shad. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight's footstool story that got me thinking and uh, about you know, well found treasures, mm-hmm. not lost ones. So I decided to devote my fun facts to that. Okay. Because you know many of us dream of you know either be becoming the the archaeologist or even a pirate discovering hidden treasures or, you know, when we go out to find gold or anything, when we metal detect, it's, you know, it's the excitement of the hunt. Sure. But could you imagine if you just stumbled across that stuff, right? (laughs) So uh, I'll start with uh, these short little stories. Okay. The first one, uh, (laughs) this is also in a thrift shop. This happened in 1992. Terry Horton visited one of the local thrift shops in San Bernardino, California. And as she was looking for a birthday present for her friend, she saw a painting and decided to get it. She didn't know anything about art. She paid $5 for it. Mm -hmm. Well, the painting didn't fit into any of the friend's room. (laughs) So (laughs) she tried to sell it several years later. During a yard sale, an, um, an art teacher saw the painting and said that she thinks this may be a Jackson Pollock. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if anybody knows who Jackson Pollock is. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that would uh, take these big canvases and just drip paint all over them. Sure. So it's kind of crazy. So uh, she invited an expert to check it out, and the forensic specialist found actually found the artist's fingerprint on the canvas, so there was no doubt that this was an original. Jackson Pollock. (laughs) It was worth $2 million. Oh, my God. Now, if you were that art person who happened to go garage sailing, would you, wouldn't that be your whole drive as an art specialist to go to garage sales and see what people are throwing away for dollars or pennies? You would think, yeah. You know, I mean, what else is he? It's like the antique road show. I mean, oh my gosh. Come on. You'd be like, all right, how much is that? $10. I'll give you a buck. Done. <laughs> Boom. Then in the news, I found a Jackson Paul. I, it only paid a buck for it. But get this. Um, 
Horton, the the person who found it, they offered her two million dollars. Um, uh, art collector did mm-hmm. to buy it, and she refused to sell it. And she said, "I will accept no less than fifty million dollars for it." Needless to say, she still owns the painting. What? She got greedy, didn't she? <laughs> yes, she did. Dang! What the heck was wrong with that woman? Remember, stuff is only worth as much someone will pay for That's it. That's right. Mm-hmm. right. You yeah. can claim but something worth it? thousands or millions. An but... art collector wanted to buy it for $2 million. I'd take it. Uh, $2 million. Yeah, yeah. I would too. I'd be Another story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one involves a food market. This happened in Pennsylvania okay. in 1989. A man bought an old $4 painting uh, thinking that he could reuse the frame from it. Uh, when he removed the canvas, he saw a folded paper stuffed in it. And he opened it and couldn't believe his eyes when he saw an original copy of the Declaration of Independence, wow. dated 1776. So he got this appraised, and um, it auctioned off at South- 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 Sotheby's mm-hmm. for $2.4 million. Wow. So he bought for four dollars, just wanting the frame, and ended up selling wow. it or auctioning it off for two point four That's million. Crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm prospecting That's in the wrong crazy. places. We should just be prospecting at thrift stores, obviously. <laughs> I'd never get that lucky Maybe. anyway. You know, we do shop at thrift stores and mm-hmm. flea markets, but we have not right. gotten No. Man. Well we we found Nothing worth two million dollars, but they're treasures to us. Right, sure. <laughs> yes, they are. Wow. Oh gosh. Okay. It seems like a lot of people are finding old paintings. Uh this one. Uh a twenty dollar or twenty nine dollar painting. These folks were using it to cover a hole in the wall in Indiana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um one day, the owner of the house realized the value of the work when the family was playing the game Masterpiece. I remember that game. It was a <laughs> board game about art. Yeah. Um, I loved that game. It was uh, the third. <laughs> they saw it in there as the third most valuable painting by Martin Johnson Heed, and it was called Magnolias on Gold Velvet Cloth. In 1999, <laughs> experts from the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston confirmed its origins and offered a good price to the owner mm-hmm. because the painting was actually still in the frame, its original frame, and they um, sold it for $1.2 million. Wow. Mm. Man, man. And it's still on display. <clears throat> Crazy. Yeah. Jeez. Unreal. <laughs> So you just never really know no, you don't. You know, what you're going to find. No, you don't. And it seems like they all seem to buy this stuff, not because they know what it is. It's just, I don't I, I don't get it. You know? Yeah. Guess if it's well, that was fun facts. Pretty cool. I guess if it's and ugly, if it's ugly and nobody wants it, and buy it. It's probably worth something, right? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes. Well, I so. guess if you look at a painting... Or a drawing at a thrift store, flea market, garage sale. Uh-huh. If it looks like something a kid did, probably should it's buy probably it. Probably worth a fortune, yeah. Because evidently that's what sells. Or if you're my mom and you're a hoarder, you would just buy it. <laughs> auctions, it's hard to even give them away most of the time. I mean, when you go to buy a painting or something, uh huh. They they can usually barely get a buck out of them. Really? Most of them. Oh yeah. See, wow. ain't that weird? And then I guess that's why people just donate them to the thrift store, and then yeah. somebody buys them, and they're worth millions of dollars. It's like yeah, it's hard to get rid of paintings, even in yard sales. I mean, yeah, yeah, because a lot of them, right? Nobody wants that stuff like that hanging in their house. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, I've seen. I mean, if it's like an animal picture or something like that, and sure. you're putting in a hunting cat. Or, right. or doing whatever, then. Right. But if it's just, you know, regular right. paint. But half of these other ones, people are like, like right, right old now. Little House on the Prairie stuff, you know, <laughs> people do not buy that. <laughs> right, they don't mind. want that. It's like, no, no. It's like, ain't no way. <laughs> and then it's worth millions of dollars. Wow. <clears throat> 
I don't get it. Maybe someday we'll get that lucky. Right? You never know. You never know. Some... Well, that's, I mean, that's all of us. We go out metal detecting and looking for gold, you know, yeah. hoping to mm-hmm. get And other people hunt for treasures at thrift stores and yard sales. So it's same kind of thing that we do, right? Not much different. In a sense, yeah. Hey, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have gotten lucky finding stuff before. I thought so. Uh, military stuff, a lot of times, you get really fortunate. Really? Uh-huh. You just got to know what you're looking for. Really? See, I've never... I See, I guess that's it. I just don't know... That, and believe it or not, you go to, like, some places, especially, like, the small-town antique stores. Mm-hmm. Nothing really, like, in a high-traffic area. You go in there, and you see all their stuff is, like, covered under dust. Right. Look around behind it. There's a lot that they don't have out front anymore mm-hmm. that's gotten buried and forgotten. You can find some really cool stuff. Interesting. That's a good little little tidbit there. Get them th- them ones that are off the beaten path, right? You know, yep. Okay. <laughs> Little small town antique shops. Cool. I like it. She had good good advice. You're welcome. It's cool. And nowadays with phones and stuff, you can find out about anything you want on something before you buy it, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. So that's always cool. So good to know. I like it. Good good advice. Mercy. Oh man. Oh man. Scott got quiet. He must, did he get hang up? I don't think so. I just got dropped. Yeah, no, I didn't hang up. Uh, wishful thinking, guys. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Usually when you get quiet, it's because we lost you. you no, know, you guys were going on, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> we were going on and on and on. <laughs> But that never stops you any other time. So it's usually, I think, that's why we lost you. I'm like, where's Scott at? He's not here. It's like, hey. Well, I mean, you guys were, like, covering all aspects, so I was good. Real, really? Dang. Well, yeah. Okay. I just throw that one, write that down. <laughs> Scott was good. Okay. I like that's it. That's funny. I like it. <laughs> mercy, mercy, mercy. So... I don't know. What else? We got anything else going on tonight? That was a, quite an interesting show, I must say. Why, yes. why do you say that? <laughs> Just what was wrong with the show? Nothing was wrong with it's it. not it was, good enough for you no, now? No, nothing was wrong with it. It was freaking oh, awesome. Day, I fell asleep. It was awesome. It was Are awesome. you saying it was a boring show, Rich? Uh, Are you saying we did not engage you? <laughs> we was not entertaining enough. <laughs> we were not entertaining him. That's the first time Rich ever fell asleep on us, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, we got that on on film forever now. Yep, it's there. <laughs> you can play it every week if you want. Don't mind the cloud. I love it. Hey, thanks, Rich. Wait till next week. I'll do it again. <laughs> oh man, that was priceless. Priceless, Rich. Thank you for that. And no. I, ain't, I ain't laughed that hard now in a while. That's just up. that's good stuff. I knew we heard something. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, mercy. Scott. I got one question. Yeah, go ahead, bud. How many people stood up a broom in the past couple of days? I, oh, my God. Don't even. That's the stupidest <laughs> thing I heard. What? You know what? I, I, I said it like it was. If you can stand up a broom, obviously you never had it in your hand and used it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm now Kathleen's lost in the sauce on this. Evidently, oh. a bullcrap post was started. A thing that said on what this specific day, on February, you, NASA says you can stand a broom up mm-hmm. without holding it. Right. No. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, as we find out, it's not, it's not a true. specific day. You can do it any right. day. <laughs> you can do it any day. But as Scott pointed out, if you're able to make it standing up, obviously you're not using it right. enough. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, because my broom didn't stand up. Trust me. No, right. Mine like, wouldn't like either. Like, it'll just stand up? It'll ba- you can balance it, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't It was that. a hoax that people believe well, the people eat Tide Pods and are retarded. <laughs> Yeah, I would have believed. Said you got to point it north and all that stuff. Really? 
I kept yeah. seeing it, and I'm like, what is this stupid? I, yeah, I didn't get it at first either. Yeah. And then Did I'm like, stop? yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God, people. Yeah. It's, I think you could post anything like that. People do it. Yeah, Jaron said it originated from a post in 2012. Oh, really? Okay. And and NASA has stated they did not really say ever say that statement. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard of balancing an egg. Yeah, that that. When do you do that oh, on that side? Yeah, you do that on one certain day of the year. Which day is it? I forget. Uh, June's. I think it's June. Is it's it the, one of the, e- the, equinox the equinox days, right? <laughs> like the longest day of the year or something. I don't know. And it, yeah, and it'll stand up on end. <laughs> huh. Equinox, yeah. yeah. I've never tried that one either, though. Have you? I have. It works. It does work? Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody, let's try that. Let's try to remember that this year and give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I got it. All right, so that's it then. I think, right, Rich? Yep. Scott, I can't believe he's being quiet. Scott, what? I'm here. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> We're leaving. Good Say good night, gold diggers. Oh, uh, wait, I thought you guys were going to say that. <laughs> good night, Gold Diggers. We, we just did. <laughs> All right. Good night, Gold Diggers. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you Sunday, 730. Wait, today's, today's Wednesday. <laughs> Sunday is 730. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Good night, everybody. Good night. Be sure to tune in <laughs> next Sunday at 730 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.